There is perhaps no one whose name is more synonymous with documenting the natural world than filmmaker Sir David Attenborough. He's been at it since the 1950s, and in his latest book and film, both out this week, he offers a grave and alarming witness statement about the crisis facing our planet. William Brangham talked with the 94-year-old recently. It's part of our ongoing arts and culture series, Canvas. The living world is a unique and spectacular marvel. No one has given us a more intimate or stunning look at our planet than Sir David Attenborough. Dazzling in their variety and richness. But now, after a near 70-year career, he says we are running the planet headlong into disaster. Yet the way we humans live on Earth is sending it into a decline. Human beings have overrun the world. In his new Netflix documentary and companion book, both titled A Life on Our Planet, the famed filmmaker wants us to recognize what's happening and to act before it's too late. I spoke with him recently from his home in London. Sir David Attenborough, uh, it's a great honor to have you on the News Hour. Thank you very much for being here. Anyone who knows your work knows that, that you've increasingly talked about man's impact on the natural world. But this film really hits this point very directly. Was it your sense that things had just gotten so bad that that needed to be the focus of this project? Yes, I, I think I've been um, speaking about this for the last 20, 30 years, really. Uh, it, it's just what anybody who knows the natural world and spends time looking at the natural world stares them in the face. And anybody with it who to that happens feels a huge responsibility to talk about it. As you say in the film and in the book that when you were a young man and going to all these exotic places, you had the sense at the time that, that man's imprint was not being felt. It, was there a moment where you first recognized and said, uh, I see it now, I see very directly the imprint that, um, that, that humanity is having on the planet? Um, yes, the problem is making global assessments like that. I mean, you can go to a glacier that you were there maybe five, ten years ago, and it has retreated, but you think, oh, well, that's just this glacier, maybe there's another one that's increasing. Uh, but there are some things that are irrevocable and so dramatic and, and distressing that you can't brush them away. The one, I suppose, was the tipping point. That was when I dived on a coral reef, which I'd known perfectly well on, the Great Barrier Reef in Australia, um, and suddenly saw the, a cemetery. And suddenly it was dead, and, and these these corals, this extraordinary, wonderful construction of, of corals, was dead, white, um, and that was a shock. There is, if I may say, uh, a genuine sense of sadness and melancholy that that is throughout this project. Um, I mean, in the past, you would often talk about man's impact on the world, but would would move on in a sense. This film, you really clearly seem to say, we are not moving on. I cannot stress this point strong enough. Well, you put it very well. That is exactly what I feel. And we, you know, you, you feel that sitting in London or New York or wherever, you may feel that what well, the wilderness is out there. And, and of course, it's interesting. And of course, we know theoretically we depend upon it. Um, but when, but now it's 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 more serious than that. Um, it affects every every man, woman, and child on this planet. Uh, I'm I'm an elderly chap, um, and I, I I look at my grandchildren uh, and uh, and wonder what's going to happen. Uh, and all I know is that uh, if you see these things and realise what they mean, uh, you you simply can't sit back and say, well, I'm not going to bother. I should say, I don't want to leave people with the sense that you don't address what we might do to remedy this. And a good portion of the book and of the film is looking at solutions. This film is my witness statement and my vision for the future. Attenborough argues for a rapid shift to renewable energy, to sustainable agriculture, for a slowing of population growth, and for what he calls a rewilding of the land and the oceans to give them time to rebound. How confident are you that we will, in fact, move from these isolated examples to a true moment for change? I'm not in the, I'm not in the least confident that we will do so in time. 
And I certainly feel, although the situation is worse, I believe that the world is becoming more aware of what uh, needs to be done uh, to a much greater extent than only, say, five, ten years ago. Uh, it does seem to me a, um, a worldwide realization of, of the crisis which we are facing. And it's been spearheaded, of course, uh, by young people, and quite rightly too, it's their future. The kids of today, are that's their life, you know, and, uh, and we owe it to them to do everything we can to make sure that um, disaster is averted. Could you talk a little bit about the role that our own human complacency plays in all of this? We all love the benefits of our gas-powered cars and our air-conditioned homes, and when we talk of a sixth extinction or global climate change, it's still very easy for so many people to put this view out of their minds and just keep on. But actually, in your country, it's more unlikely for that to happen than in mine. I mean, you have faced disaster after disaster. You've got rising sea levels. Uh, you had cyclones, hurricanes moving through with greater ferocity than, and frequency than ever before. We see on our television newsreel coverage of appalling things that have happened in your country because of climate change seem to me um, uh, overwhelming. And uh, it, it's nice to say, oh, it's nothing, it's just a passing phrase. It isn't. And, and the statistics show it isn't. It is a major movement that's happening. And your country and my country and the rest of the world have got to do something about it. And we can, and we know what to do. Do you have to dig deep down to, to come up with this optimism? Or is the, is the long arc of your career what gives you this optimism? What is it? I, I don't regard myself as an optimist, to be truthful. I mean, um, but having said that, we have to recognize that if we're going to solve it, we are going to, as humanity, act as one. And that means that people will have to give as well as take. And if that's to happen, it's got to be supported by the electorate who says, we want it to happen. We want to solve it. And tell us what the price is, but we want to pay it. The book and the film is called A Life on Our Planet, My Witness Statement and Vision for the Future. Sir David Attenborough, thank you so much for talking with us and thank you for your remarkable career. Thank you so much.